Good afternoon, I'm Constable Jennifer Sidhu. Today I would like to introduce Superintendent Steve Watts of Organized Crime Enforcement. He will be updating the media on the investigation into a shooting at 55 Beverly Hills Drive. Superintendent. Thank you and good afternoon all. Um, I'm gonna start just with a brief uh, synopsis and then we can go to some questions after. On Tuesday, June the 9th, the funeral service for Demario Jenkins was held at New Haven Funeral Center, located at 7025 Legion Road in Mississauga. After the funeral, a memorial gathering was held at a restaurant known as Black's, B-L-A-X-X, -X, located at 55 Beverly Hills Drive in the city of Toronto. Numerous people were in attendance at this memorial for Mr. Jenkins. This restaurant has a rear door which provides access to a large parking lot at the rear of the establishment. The parking lot is situated immediately north of the westbound lanes of Highway 401, west of Jane Street and east of Highway 400. At approximately 11.22 p.m., a dark colored sedan traveling westbound on Highway 401 pulls to the shoulder directly alongside uh, the parking lot of the restaurant. <clears throat> Unknown occupant or occupants in this vehicle discharge a firearm towards the crowd that's gathered at the rear of the restaurant. The suspect vehicle is there for approximately four seconds and then flees westbound on Highway 401 and out of view. Approximately 10 persons of interest are captured on this video in the parking lot, either brandishing and or discharging firearms south in the direction of Highway 401 and the vehicle which has since left the scene. During this time period of approximately 45 seconds that's elapsed, numerous vehicles driving westbound on Highway 401 pass this location as gunfire is being directed towards the highway by persons from the rear of the restaurant. All of these suspects eventually flee the area. <clears throat> At the scene, police located in excess of 60 shell casings of various calibers. There were two victims that suffered from gunshot wounds in relation to this incident in the parking lot. They subsequently arrived at Humber Wilson Hospital later where they were treated for their injuries. Through further investigation, members of the centralized shooting response teams determined that one of the victims had been in possession of a firearm and allegedly had discharged it towards Highway 401. I'm just gonna go through the names of the arrested males and there's also two wanted parties in relation to this occurrence. So the arrested males are identified as uh, Mr. Gadil O'Neill Lednick, and this will all be provided in the release for you, as well as all of his charges. So that's L-E-D-I-N-E-K, and a complete list of charges will be provided in the news release to you. He uh, was currently on possession for, at the time of this offense, for possession of a loaded prohibited firearm, uh, sorry, on parole, and he was also currently before the courts at this time. Um, his next court date will be July 7th, sorry, July 3rd, my apologies. The second person that was arrested uh, later that week was a Mr. Traquan Mahoney, M-A-H-O-N-E-Y. He is also on a variety of charges that are listed and given to you. He is not, he was not injured in this event. He is also scheduled to appear at Thousand Finch Avenue Courts on July 3rd at 10 a.m. So with the assistance of the specialized assets within the Toronto Police Service and Peel Regional Police Service, our CSRT investigators have been able to identify an additional two persons in the parking lot who are also armed with firearms and allegedly discharged them during this incident. Warrants in the first have been sworn for these two individuals. We are actively attempting to locate and arrest them. The first individual is Mr. Terrell Burke Whitaker. It's showing on the screen there. He has, uh, he's not currently before the courts on anything. And I will get into further uh, details of his description later if needed. The second warrant in the first has been sworn out for a Mr. Javante Johnson, 
who is now on the screen there. Thank you. And he also uh, is wanted for this event. Um, I can tell you that uh, Mr. Johnson also has a warrant out on the, on the system held by York Regional Police Service for flight from police officer and a dangerous operation of a motor vehicle with an offense date being a day after this shooting. So our investigators are continuing to review the video, work with all of our GTA partners to identify the remaining persons responsible for this incident. And the investigators are seeking the assistance of the public with any information in relation to this incident. And I would just like to finish off this portion with um, thanking all of the all of the police personnel, including our frontline primary response officers that attended this scene, as we all know. Um, these scenes are highly dynamic. Um, they're highly volatile. This was an exceptional scene in, this, in the, the sense that the amount of rounds were discharged. So our first responders did an excellent job um, setting up the crime scene and allowing for the uh, investigation, for the integrity of the investigation and for the evidentiary flow thereafter. So. I would just like to put out my thanks to all of the uniform officers that attended this and as well as all the investigative personnel that have worked extremely hard. So that concludes uh, the initial portion of this. I'll take questions now. Thank you. Betsy Powell, Toronto Star. Hi. Good afternoon, Superintendent. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. It's pretty clear with all the back shooting going on there, that there's something going on. Can you please identify who you think both sides are and when and why did this come with you? Well, you're referring, you're referring to Mr. Jenkins and his homicide and that occurrence? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to get into that, Betsy. I'm not going to speak to that investigation. Obviously, that's still a live and uh, ongoing dynamic investigation. But um, there are there are uh, no doubt connections with that. But I'll allow the lead investigator um, speak to any type of connections in the future that he wants to make in relation to that. Okay, can I just ask you? Some high-profile members of the hip-hop community don't believe police can stop the gun violence. There's a petition going to council next week to bring a California initiative to Toronto that would involve recruiting local crime-involved youth putting them on the city payroll and deploying them to act as peacemakers. Um, this was tried or done actually in Richmond, California, and it brought the homicide rate down by 40%. Do you think that's something worth exploring here? And do you think it would be effective and would you support it? You're referring to the advanced peace initiative. Is that what it's termed as? Exactly. Yes, Correct. Sir. Okay. So yeah, that was back in 2007, I believe, uh, as you said, in California. And um, I just want to be clear and make the distinction between, you know, between hip hop and rap music. Um, it is a true art form. It is, you know, an expression that of um, of a certain type of of social disparity that exists. So it is by no means connected, or it's not. You cannot connect. There are two separate entities when you're talking about uh, criminal conduct and hip hop, they're, they're completely separate. One may speak to the other. So in relation to the actual, that initiative, I think any opportunity needs to be explored. Um, there's other, you know, there's other opportunities and other techniques. That's a kind of a spin-off of the, uh, the Boston Gun Project, which you know was held earlier in the 2000s in the US, where the actual members of these groups are brought together. So I think any and all, um, venues, any and all um, opportunities need to be explored in relation to this. Yes. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Nope. We're good. I'll walk away. Thank you. That concludes today's conference. A news release will be published shortly.